without a new heart. He's not gonna make it. Okay. You take mine. What? You heard me. Take my heart and you put it in my cup. Oh man, you done lost your damn mind. You can't be serious. You bet I'm serious. I'm dead serious. Oh my god. Man, that means you'll be dead. And my son will live. John, you can't do this. It's the only way. No, you don't understand. Physically, you can't do this. Yes, I can. I kill myself. You open me up, you take my heart. Oh, man, that's just crazy. No, no, we can't just remove your heart and put it into Michael's body. John, there are too many unknowns. Matching a donor and a recipient is extremely complicated. There are several critical tests that have to be taken. Like what? Cross matches for blood type, chest cavity measurements. If both blood tissues are not completely compatible... Come on, I know all about compatibility, no. okay? We've been tested up the wazoo. We're both B positive, our tissues match, his heart's three times the size of a normal heart, so mine will fit. You know damn well we're compatible. It's out of the question. Too risky. Doc, I'm telling you, he will make it. Can't do it, John. No. So what? So if I'm laying on the floor dead, you're not going to take my heart and put it in him to save his life? You'll let two people die instead of one because of a technicality? You know what? I think what John is trying to do is right. Me too. I think it's so brave. It's brave, but what do you think Mike would want? What about your wife? Mike's too young to know what's going on. I'm his father. It's my job to protect him. Besides, Denise would do the same thing. John, look. I know what's happening to Mike is bad, man. Matter of fact, it's the worst. Killing yourself ain't gonna solve a damn thing. Sometimes you just gotta let go. Just accept it. Accept it? Accept what? Accept what? That Mike is going to die. No. No, I don't accept that. Ever. We have some very good news for you. Landed O'Hara, the helicopter's gonna be here in 15 minutes. You do the honor, okay? okay. John? John? Thank you for joining me on another edition about teaching God's holy word. Please bow with me as we welcome in the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, we just want to forever praise your holy and divine name. Dear Lord, we ask that the Holy Spirit's presence fall fresh upon us right now in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. Dear Lord, we ask that your word is utilized as unique manifestation so someone can be created a clean heart today. Dear Lord, we just want to forever praise your holy and divine name. In the name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you, Heavenly Father. Amen. So it is essential for the Christian believer to continuously analyze the vicissitudes of life. As we really examine what God has for us in our daily lives, please turn with me today to Psalm chapter 51, verses 10. Once again, that's Psalm chapter 51, verse 10. And we're going to read from the New International Version. And it reads as thus, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. So as we really hone in on this verse and, and start to meticulously analyze the scripture, it is essential for us to understand that people must understand that they must adhere to the word of the Lord and adhere to God's commandments in order to rid themselves of the wickedness that is in this world. So, so 
Another translation that is utilized is the English Standard Version. It says, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. And, and as we start to analyze this, we must essentially give background. It says, David's heart had been full of lust for Bathsheba. Mm -hmm. Murderous plans for Uriah and a rebellion against God. He desired a new heart, one that was full of love for God and abhorrence of evil. And, and sin in his heart had bought him nothing but guilt, grief, and remorse. He wanted spiritual heart surgery that only God could perform. See, Jesus cited the heart as the source of either good or evil. He explained the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil for out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. And, and, and you can find that in Luke chapter 6 and 45. And then it goes on to say, Jesus also said that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. And, and you can find that in Matthew 5 and 28. So, so David, therefore, had committed adultery with Bathsheba in his heart before the physical act of adultery took place. Mm -hmm. He needed a new heart, but he also asked the Lord to renew in him a spirit within him. He wanted the kind spirit that would obey the Lord at, at all times. So how, how does that apply to your life? And, and, and how do you create in you a, a clean heart? Mm -hmm. So all of that animosity that you have toward another individual, all of that strife, all of that dissension, all of that anger, all of that malice that you are holding against another individual for, for doing you wrong, you've got to let that go. You've got to give it to God. You, you've got to allow God to creating you a, a new heart that, that uh, doesn't allow yourself to, to hold grudges doesn't allow yourself to be very wicked, doesn't allow yourself to be that person who has a, a heart of stone. So, so when we really analyze the scripture and, and we start understanding that I can't be this person who, who rules with an iron fist and, and doesn't really help out other people, I can't be that person who, who, who looks down on other individuals and, and belittles them. I, I can't be that person who who is pretentious and, and, and looks at other people with, with disgust because I feel like that I am better in my lifetime. See, see, when you ask God to create in you a new heart, you, you're asking God to, to change your perspective. You're asking God to to raise you up from that from that level of of small mindedness that a lot of people have on a consistent basis. See, see, they really think that they're better mm -hmm. and, and they really think that they're above other people in society. But, but in retrospect, these people are, are the lowest on the category. See, God says the meek will inherit the kingdom of God. So all of these people out here right now that is, that is flourishing and, 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 and they're, and they're super rich See, see, God doesn't say that you can't have some wealth within your family, but it's, it's what you do with that wealth that, that defines you, that, de that defines your legacy. So, so if you want to keep matriculating through life, if you want God to create in you a new heart, then you've got to put down all the things in your life that are contrary to his will. It, it, see, you've got to be that person who can stand up against the people at your job when, when, they're, when they're looking down on someone because of their ethnicity. You, you've got to be the person that who can stand up when, when somebody is being ridiculed because of their, because of their, because of their faith on your workshop. See, it, it's several things that, that people really don't speak up about in society. And, and they expect certain things to come back to them. They expect great things to happen to them in life. But if you're that person that's out there that's not planting the seeds that God will want you to do, 
and, 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 and your harvest is not reaping what, what you thought it would, then you've got to understand what, what am I going out there and sowing? What am I going out there and doing in the time of harvest season? See, see, when, when God creates in you a new heart, you, you take out all of that wickedness. You take out all of that sin and you lay it down and, and you allow God to increase in your, in your life. So you got to lay down that burden down by the riverside. See, Ezekiel 36 and 26 really allows the, the believer to hone in on what it means to, to creating you a, a new heart. So if we go quickly to Ezekiel 36 and 26, New International Version, and it reads as thus, I will give you a new heart and put in you a new spirit. I will remove you fr from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh, meaning that you can feel that compassion. You can feel that that sympathy when, when other people are in need. See, see, instead of you having that, that heart of stone like Pharaoh, you, you've got to have that, that heart of compassion. You've got to have that heart of sympathy. So, so when God is asking you to, to change your life, when you're asking God to create in me a new heart, you've got to understand if you've got to lay down those burdens down by the riverside, you've got to lay down that alcoholism. You've got to lay down those drugs. You've got to lay down those sexual desires. You've got to lay down those unscrupulous financial deals. You've got to lay down mocking individuals. You've got to lay down everything that is against God's will. You've got to lay down that, that superiority mindset that, that allows you to think that you're better than other people. You've got to lay down those burdens. You've got to allow God to create a new clean heart within you. Allow God to give you that new spirit. Allow God to work in your life. Allow God to really help you out. If you want a new heart, if you want a new mindset, if you want a, a clean spirit, if you want a, a pure spirit from, from the Lord today, you've got to hasten to God's throne. You've got to stop being that person who thinks they're better. Stop belittling people today. Start start taking care of people today. Stop judging people today. Start giving to people today. See, you've got to be that person who can go out on the sides of the street and give out money and, and not really expect anything in return and not judge that person thinking that they're going to go use it on drugs. That's not up for you to judge. That's up to the Lord. You've got to be that person God would want you to be. But in order for you to get to that, you've got to be able to obey God's commands. So God says, create in me a clean heart. God says, God says he wants you to be safe, rescued, and delivered. And he'll do that if you obey him. Thank you.